1980 legend, Buzz Schneider, joins us to discuss miracle accuracy, miracle on ice beer, and life as a gold medalist. Plus, we say goodbye to Tom Curvers. As always, all of that and more presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Better Edge, Jim Beam, and State Farm Insurance agent Tony Hoagland at champlininsurance.com. This is episode 79. Newly restocked 1980 Herb Brooks Foundation collaborations just in time for the 4th of July holidays can now be found at SodaStick.com. Also, don't forget to live that McGolden Light Lake Life or rock a Randy Moss moon shirt. Snake 15% off all purchases with code BARDOWNBEAUTIES at checkout. SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting Let's Play Hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the State of Hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporate Claremont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. We're back. We fired Fred again this week. So you hate what to do you see expect? It. You hate to see it. You know, he's really got to step his game up. The last, I don't know. It, he'll be back next week. I'm sure we'll have to sit down with him, have, you know, like a meeting when, you know, somebody does something wrong and bring him back for one more yeah. chance. And, you know, I mean, apparently he thinks family vacations are like important during the summer or whatever. I suppose that's fine. some people haven't figured out like Fred and then there's us who are just back again for another day, another day of work. We just love the Bar Down Beauties <laughs> podcast so, so much. Uh, no, but thanks for joining us. As we mentioned, Buzz Schneider on the pod this week. Very, very excited just in time for the 4th of July weekend because, you know, He's all things America. <laughs> he really is. And he's so fun to talk to, too. So it's a great, uh, great episode to listen to here. If you're uh, taking a trip up to the cabin, need something to listen to or whatever it may be. A uh, really fun interview. We, we got blessed the last couple of weeks here. Linda Cohen was awesome. And Buzz Schneider with a, a follow up here for two weeks in a row of some really great interviews. And we will have another great episode coming next week. Actually, when you're listening to this on Monday, we are going to be out at the Champions for Children golf tournament with the University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Center, along with a bunch of other athletes and names raising money for the University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Cancer Wing. So very exciting. Be sure to tune in next week. Naturally, enjoy this week's episode. Don't rush it. <laughs> yeah. We'll get there. But uh, that's where we're at live. Our, our social media channels will be hopping in a buzzing with all the really cool content that we have from out there. So we're very grateful grateful to Nick Ingblom and the uh, University of Minnesota for including us in this event. Yeah, it's a fun time in the summertime to have all these things to go do because we're stuck in our houses for so long in the winter and then to have these events pop up. And and it's it's such an honor, too, that people think to invite us. I mean, I think, Jesse, you and I are still like taken aback when people are like, hey, we yeah. want you to come to this. Like, and why? Like, oh, really? This OK, is, yeah. what? <laughs> thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> We'd love to we'll have fun. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's nice, especially when the events are raising money for, for something or trying to bring awareness to something. Jesse, Fred and I love doing that kind of stuff. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the content we put out uh, while we're there. And as uh, Jesse said, make sure you to check out our episode from that week too. Absolutely. And keeping with the theme of things coming back, the world healing, feeling better, the beauty league officially, officially back. I know we mentioned it in last week's episode, but dates, schedules, players have been released. Whoop, whoop. Very excited. I already let Ben Hankinson know that we are available to do literally anything <laughs> he wants us to do. We will be there. Yeah. Um, I'm usually out there anyway, getting stories for NHL.com. I've also got a couple stories in the works for USA hockey magazine that I'll be out there for. So certainly if you see me, feel free to say hello. I'm sure Alexis will be popping out with me when her, uh, Hashtag get Alexis out of waitressing schedule permits. Yeah. Hashtag get Alexis out of waitressing. It's been a tough couple of weeks, uh, but yeah, love the beauty league. As Jesse mentioned, she'll be there regardless. I, I hope to make it out to um, some of those nights as well. Fun way to spend your Wednesday nights uh, in the summertime for sure. And uh, a chance to see pro athletes come play in a much more relaxed setting. And uh, it's a really cool environment. So if you've never gone to a beauty league game before, highly recommend it. Um, it's a way to get your hockey fix in the summertime when the rest of hockey is taking a break. So uh, here in Minnesota, we don't take breaks and uh, nice to see the beauty league is back for another summer here. I mean, my favorite, so I've literally been out there since its inception, even before that, cause it started out. And for those that aren't aware, um, Ben Hankinson is an agent with Octagon and this has started out Check as like out a our summer episode skate. With him. <laughs> great episode. Great app. Go back. We'll listen to it. Um, he'll obviously be on the pod later coming up this summer as well, but no, it started out as a summer skate because he 
he represents so many of the yeah. top name Minnesota guys. And then they decided to do this beauty league. And my favorite part of it is the amount of time these players take to sign literally every autograph that the kids yes. have, like, yes. and kids have gotten so creative with like dropping it down. So there's the tunnel that the players walk down up and down and kids have like tied on pens to strings yeah. and like dropped it in their hats. And I mean, you will, you've got guys like Nate Schmidt that everybody knows is just a lovable mm-hmm. guy. He'll be out there signing every autograph. Eric Holla signs every yep. autograph. Um, you know, pretty much everybody does Brock Besser, Jake Gardner, Zach Parisi, every name that you can think of in Minnesota will be there for the most part. Um, again, those vary. So certainly check it out. We're excited to be there. Um, and that's going to be a very good time. Again, feels good to be back. Yeah. Hockey. We're doing different content as another reminder for this episode. We'll focus mostly on, uh, on our guest, Bush Schneider, but we do want to talk a little NHL because yep. Montreal Canadians, baby. I, I love to see it. I love to see it. I love to see it. First of all, I love to see it because that means I don't have to watch Vegas play in a Stanley <laughs> cup final. So first of all, that's exciting. Second of all, I tweeted this out last night and I immediately texted my boyfriend. I was like, I can't wait to see who this makes angry. But I said that, uh, I love that the Canadians suck and made it to the Stanley cup final. And I was yes. like, this is going to make somebody it's mad. True. Cause I may obviously making a joke, but it is kind of funny because the odds were so stacked against them. Like they didn't have a great regular season no. and every round they won. Everyone was like, okay, how did they make it out of this round? How did they make it out of that round? Now they're in the Stanley cup final and everyone's like, what did we just witness? How did they, they have like the Montreal youngest Canadians? line tearing <laughs> it up for them? Like, it's insane. It's so fun to watch and so I I'm proponent of chaos everybody knows that so I love how chaotic it is that the Canadians made it to the Stanley Cup final um and I mean it's cool because they haven't made it in so long either so I'm excited a to Canadian see Canadian team period, Canadian team period. hasn't yeah. made it in so long which is like you know me and my USA hockey hat but it's yeah it's good for them you know and actually frankly because Vegas deserves this. Okay. Oh, yeah. They have not been a franchise. Like, nope. I don't feel bad for your fan base. Like, oh, we always get here. It's like, oh, is that hard? Is that yeah. hard for four years or five, whatever it is now? Like, please, like Montreal deserves this. The New York Islanders, yeah. again, deserve we're recording it. this on a Friday. They will deserve this. I want to yeah. see the Islanders go. Um, I think the NHL will hate that, but I want to see it. Plus those, I mean, if you saw Montreal, the, the cuts to Montreal, like, God, they, they just, yeah. I'm so excited for it. I do have to make a joke at the Minnesota Wild's expense that <laughs> due to Montreal playing for the Western Conference final, they now have more Western Conference final championship banners than the Minnesota Wild. So oh, you hate to you see know. it. You hate to see it. But uh, I made yeah. that joke last night. I was like, God, that's funny. I'm not going to tweet it because I don't want to make people mad. But now I'm going to say it. So. Well, and everybody was responding to my tweet. The one about the Canadian sucking. They were like, I'd rather take that suck than the wild suck. And I'm like, come on, guys, it's a joke. You don't got to drag the wild into this either. Like it was it's fun to see. And I mean, either way, like you said, we're recording this on Friday, whichever team between the Islanders and the Bolts go to that Stanley Cup final. you got a good storyline either way. You've got the Islanders with a chance to play for a Stanley Cup, which will be really exciting. Jesse, you and I both love them because they're stacked with Minnesotans. They're a fun mm-hmm. team to watch. Um, I think Matt Barzell is, is one of my favorite players to watch in the NHL. Mm-hmm. He's just so good and so fun. Um, but if you the Bolts go, you've got a chance to watch a team win back-to-back Stanley Cups, which is and hard they have to do. Ryan so. McDonough, so we still yep. get our Minnesota flavor. Yeah. And so. Vasilevsky, I mean, is probably the best goalie in yeah. the NHL. So it's like either way, you've got a good storyline. Um, so I'm excited to see the way that this is kind of all unfolded with, I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? That we got such a chaotic finish to the season and just like the most random teams making it. And, uh, but yeah, either way, it's going to be fun. I think at this point, I'm honestly rooting for the Canadians, even if the Islanders yeah. make it, I'm, I might have to root for the Canadians. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'll probably place a bet on the New York Islanders making it to the Stanley cup finals, just because that's where my heart belongs. Alexis, like you've been riding need. that train this whole time. You got to take you. it to the finish line. Thank <laughs> you. And you know, I've been doing this years past, so yeah. I'm going to go to betteredge.com and I'm going to toss in Buttes B E A U T S for a free 10 bucks. And I'm going to toss down a bet that the New York Islanders are going to advance past Tampa Bay lightning in game seven. Um, naturally you guys will be listening to this on Monday and either think I am accurate or I'm an idiot one <laughs> or the other, but be sure to check out better edge and see my bet. Um, we, after game seven, we will have wrapped up the semis of beat the butte. I don't know if you guys saw who's, uh, who's been leading that most of the way. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just love it. I know Mike, my husband's playing too. And he's like in second, not because we're cheating either, by the way, but he keeps trying. He's like, so 
did you take the over under? Cause he's only like one behind me. Oh, and so it's like, if I get trying to wrong, pick against you, yeah, yeah, so he's yeah. Like, you're thinking too much about it. I'm like, no, you're trying to cheat. <laughs> I'm going to win. I want to win. And he's like, well, if I win, we both win. And I was like, no, I win. Like, so if Jesse's marriage you. falls apart, we're blaming betteredge.com. <laughs> <laughs> betteredge.com. That's B E T T O R edge.com. Again, codes Buttes, B E A U T S will snag you a free 10 bucks. Go check it out. They're updating a lot of the platform, doing a lot of really cool stuff. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really having a good time even when I'm losing. So, which I will not lose again, Islanders, <laughs> let's go. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're loving it. So it's, it's been great segueing into a more somber tone here. Um, speaking of the Canadians, Tom Curvers, who actually won a Stanley cup with Montreal in 1986, um, unfortunately lost his battle with cancer. He'd been battling that for about two and a half years, lung yeah. cancer, never smoked a day in his life. I remember chatting with him about that. And he's like, I don't know how that, this happened, yeah. um, but truly one of the greatest guy. One of Hobie Baker with University of Minnesota Duluth, Bloomington Jefferson guy helped lead them to state back in the day, um, and just just a staple in the press box. Every time yeah. I saw him, like you would never have known that he was going through such a serious battle because it was it was looking pretty grim right when he was diagnosed, and he was able to extend you know the prognosis a, a little bit by doing some experimental things, um, but really just an outstanding human being. I mean, he did so much goodness in hockey in the state, but he was just a really, really good person. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we've talked about stories like this on the podcast, uh, you know, talking about several different people who've gone through something like this or lost their life. And the thing that always sticks out the most to me is the way that people talk about the person after, you know, they pass away yeah. or, or when they're diagnosed with something or when the tragedy happens and you go on social media and you see all these people telling all these stories about this person. And you might know the person really well, or you might think that, you know, him really well. And then you see these people telling these stories and you're like, wow, there's so many other layers to this person I didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. um, and just hearing everybody's perspective of their relationship with that person, it's such a sad way to have to learn about a person. But when you go through and look at all of it, it warms your heart that that person had such an impact on people. And it happened again with Tom Curvers when he passed away and seeing everybody talk about him. And, you know, when I even think about, you know, how when Russo writes the story, he unlocks it for everybody to see because it's mm -hmm. like he had such an impact that you want everybody to be able to, you know, take in what this person, who this person was and what they did. And uh, yeah. it was a sad day in Minnesota for sure. And um, and uh, just reading everybody's stories about him um, was hard to see, but it, it's a good feeling to know that he had such an impact on people. Yeah, no, uh, all of the warmest hugs and condolences and best wishes to his family and all of his friends who knew him even closer than, than you yeah. or I did, but, uh, certainly sad, um, to, to see that happen to, to anybody, but especially one of, one of our own. So on that note, we are going to wrap up segment one. We are going to get to Buzz Schneider, um, who again, I'm very excited about. I think I've told you guys this. I love, old players, not to call him <laughs> old, but I mean, I, I get more excited about that than yeah. like even a Connor McDavid. I know. Well, that's especially like weird. the 1980 team specifically, I feel like has a very special place in your heart. Like those yes. Olympians, like you just absolutely love those guys. <laughs> exactly. I could watch Miracle and I have watched Miracle. I could recite the entire movie, <laughs> yeah. but I still get chills. Like, I don't know what's yeah. going to happen. Like, you know, what's going to happen, but I can't can't get enough and I love all the, the behind the scenes insight he gave to that movie so we're gonna take a quick break when we come back Buzz Schneider it might be the off season but that doesn't mean you can't still shop Bard on Beauty's apparel get yourself a tank to add to your summer wardrobe or a Bard on Beauty sticker to slap on your water bottle to stay hydrated in the summer heat whatever you want we've got it all at our Bard on Beauty's Teespring store we're back Pass, shoot, and score, you know the line, the cone headline, 1980 Olympian and Iron Ranger, Buzz Schneider joins us now. Buzzy, how are you? Real good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for coming. I mean, I don't know if you know this, I have been a fan of yours for a very long time. <laughs> I remember meeting your son, Neil, when I was waitressing at decoys back in the day, back in <laughs> high school, and being like, your dad is the Buzz Schneider? And he was like, yeah. Like, just obviously, <laughs> you know your sons, right? They probably don't care, but to me... It was kind of a big deal. Do you get that a lot wherever you go? Uh, still a little bit, yeah. Yeah. In fact, my my kids they like Neil Broughton and Mike Ramsey better than me. So. <laughs> I think that's like how it has to go, right? The kids can't. Pick oh their yeah, dad exactly. Their favorite. <laughs> well, no, that's that's nothing wrong with that. That's great. You know, it's it's funny because speaking of your sons, Billy played you in the movie Miracle, which is probably what raised even more notoriety about yeah. you guys for this new generation. Was Neil a little bit butthurt about that at all, or how did Billy snag the job? Uh, 
not not really. Uh, you know, I always kid Billy. I tell him he made more money in the movie than I did. But, uh, <laughs> he actually had to try out. They didn't know who he was till three quarters of the way through and flew him out to L.A. And, and then the producer, Gavin O'Connor, asked him, is Buzz your father? And he goes, yeah. I said, you should have told me er- earlier. I would have put you automatically in the movie. So I'm going to do it on my own. <laughs> no, but Neil, Neil, no, my kids are, uh, they're not competitive with each other they get along each other and they love each other and uh, uh you know it didn't bother neil at all he, uh neil uh, was i think he was working out in montana at the time and uh, uh and uh, so it didn't bother him at all and it was a good opportunity for billy too yeah well, exactly it, did was jonathan seagull a better player <laughs> version of you in the in the tv show than billy did or did billy nail it yeah, uh, Billy, I think nailed it, but I never did see. I never did see the first one they put out. Oh, I can't remember when the first Miracle movie came out. I think I was. I God, I think I was playing hockey or over in Switzerland at the time, so I didn't see much of it, and uh, uh, so I didn't really know that much about that one. So you were just busy living the life of. I was living, yeah. So yeah. I, yeah, I caught up to it after it was all done. <laughs> well, and speaking of uh, the the famous Miracle on Ice movie that everybody knows and loves, how cool was that to have been a part of the the team that won it, and then to see this turn into this big thing? And even someone like me who wasn't alive in 1980, yeah. that's still one of my favorite movies. And I feel like I watched it in real time, even though I wasn't <laughs> even alive, because the movie is so cool. How cool is that as someone who experienced the actual thing? You know. It was special, uh, to, not only to me, but the other guys, you know, we were there, uh, uh, you know, seated seventh going into the Olympics back in 1980. And, uh, uh, and we had a good team. A lot of people don't realize how good we were when you look at the guys that went on the National Hockey League and played well. But, you know, we came together, we bonded, uh, uh, we all get along, we all still get along to this day. And to do something like that, winning the gold medal, I mean, that's, I did, we didn't suspect that at all. I mean, it, kind of took us a little bit too, but, uh, uh, but I'll tell you what, I'm sure probably the other 19 guys I played with. And, uh, uh I think, uh, uh, it's pretty special to me and a good bunch of guys too. We also get along. It's wonderful. And, uh, for the movie to come out, uh, I think that actually gave us legs. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, it's still popular now. It's, it's hard to believe it's carried on this long, really. I mean, it's, it's amazing, but it, it's kind of fun though, too. Yeah. How accurate overall was the movie, whether it was in the depiction of her Brooks or kind of some of the things that went on? I mean, was it pretty to a T as much as you remember it? It was pretty close. They did take a few liberties in the movie. I, I believe and I think Jack O'Callaghan and uh, 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 Robbie McClane, they never really fist fought at all. Uh, <laughs> so they did carry that. But it was amazing to see that movie being made. I mean, Kurt Russell, uh, he did a wonderful job playing Herb Brooks. And in fact, he learned how to uh, uh, write left-handed. Uh, when I, I had the opportunity back when they were filming it out in Vancouver, I went back. I told my wife I'd take her back out there. Unbeknownst that we didn't know they were filming the Miracle movie there at that time. And uh, it was amazing how they filmed that movie. I mean, I first saw Kurt Russell. He looked just like Herbie. It gave me chills. I go, wow, does he look like him? And he acted like him. His mannerisms were identical. Yeah. And uh, the way they did that movie out there, they took a bigger rink and they put plywood around it to make it a smaller rink. And they had cardboard cutouts for people. And uh, <laughs> I really learned a lot. It was pretty accurate. Uh, and I enjoyed watching it being made. And I also enjoyed watching it. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys actually, did your plane hit a moose in Teeth River Falls? That was one that I was always like, interesting. Wonder <laughs> if that happened. Well, I was one of the lucky Iron Rangers that didn't have to make that trip. I heard about <laughs> it. That was right before we were going out to Lake Placid and Herbie uh, uh, told me and I, I know told Pav to, you know, to, we were moving out of our apartment. So I moved my stuff back up to the Iron Range to have my parents' house at the time. So I never made that trip. But I did hear that the, the plane did hit the light pole three times. They had to get out and push it. It was one of those planes where the two wheels are in the front and one sits in the back. Yeah. So uh, luckily I never had, made, had to make that trip. So I, I'm <laughs> glad I missed that game. <laughs> um, you know, continuing on the Miracle on Ice theme, you're actually involved in Miracle on Ice, a beer, which I think is also very appropriate considering <laughs> hockey, beer, Miracle. I'll go see other. Tell us about that latest endeavor that you have going on and where people can maybe purchase some Miracle okay. on Ice beer. I got involved a couple of years ago. Bob Grazinger, uh, he played hockey at Denver. Uh, he acquired the Miracle on Ice uh, trademark rights and he asked me if I wanted to get involved. And about a year later, he asked me if I wanted to get involved again, and I told him I would. And it's a beer. It's uh, 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 right now it's being uh, brewed at, at Liftbridge Brewery out in Stillwater. Uh, JJ Taylor is a distributor here in the Twin Cities and Minnesota. And I know Total Wines carries it, MGM. I know Herbie's by the Park has it, uh, the Loon, downtown St. Paul. 
of Hillbox, the Eagles, uh, Eagle Street, and I know there's a bunch of places in, uh, uh, in Minneapolis as well. But we also have a partnership that we created with uh, uh, Northway Brewery out in uh, Glen Falls, New York, and they also produce it and they distribute it all across the western part of the state of New York. So it's going well out in uh, New York right now. And hopefully after the COVID thing here lifts, it'll, it'll start to be picked up here in town. So, uh, and the neat thing about it is some part of the proceeds go to uh, charities like the Hendrickson Foundation. It's wonderful for those uh, sled hockey kids. And so I'm particularly pleased about that. So I think this is pretty neat. And, uh, uh, you know, if you want to buy a six pack for your Father's Day gift for this week, it'd be a pretty good thing to do. There you go. I love that plug. Nice work, Buzzy. You're out there. Doing I'm working on it. <laughs> Well, it's funny because you gave us a great segue and Jesse is like the biggest fan of segues of all time, the Hendrickson Foundation. <laughs> um, you're involved in that as well. Um, and that's how uh, you and Jesse got connected here recently. Um, talk about that organization and all the cool stuff they do and how you got involved with them. Well, how I got involved is uh, Hendrickson, uh, Danny and Darby asked me to get involved a couple of years ago. And I think I had another event or something, but you know, what the Hendrickson Foundation does, you know, the opportunities for kids, you know, the handicapped kids, disability kids to have a chance to go out to, you know, and be on a team and play. And I was up there a couple of weeks ago and what I thought was particularly cool, this lady from Northern Iowa uh, came up to me and she was talking about the kids and she goes, you know, Buzz, this is the first time in my life I ever got to cheer for, that I could cheer for my son and daughter. Mm. And I thought that was pretty special. I mean, for these kids to get an opportunity to do something like that and it lifts them up, I, I think it's a, it's a, I think it's a wonderful idea. I wish more people could be participating in it. I mean, that, wasn't it amazing to see those athletes out there too? I know oh, you got kind yes. of that first glimpse this weekend. Oh yeah. I was, I was, I was in awe. And, uh, uh, I think for something like for kids, that's really special. I mean, what a, what a great gift. And, uh, uh for the Hendrickson foundation to put on that carry on tradition, uh, you know, part of our proceeds went to help and you know, I'll donate to the Hendrickson Foundation for those people. So I'm looking for uh, many more years of it. And I think it's a wonderful thing for kids. You know, if we're going to blame Neil Broughton for the reason our team lost in the celebrity game, right? <laughs> I think so. We got to, we got to, we got to work on a better draft next year. <laughs> Either Broughton or Greenlay in that one of the two, we have to make a change. I think so. I think you're right. <laughs> you know, speaking of Neil Broughton, and obviously you had mentioned the 1980 team comes together for so many events, um, especially every four years around the Olympics yeah. when they like to remind you guys that you had won the gold medal. <laughs> um, you know, how often are you in touch with your teammates? I know Boz running around here. Um, and a lot of the guys are Minnesotans and have come back, but how often do you get to see some of those guys? You know, more often than you think, I think next month when there's a, uh, they're building the monument up of our team up in Lake Placid for a, a, for a miracle or for a statue, uh, Katie millions involved in, with that out in, uh, some foundation out in New York. And so we're, I think 15 of us are coming back to mystic Lake around July 10th or 11th to get together. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that golf and, you know, jazzing with the guys and stuff but we still get together you know do, do uh, card signings a couple times a year and uh, uh there's a lot of little bit different events going on so we all stay in touch pretty much so it's i never thought we'd be this close after this many years it's unbelievable <laughs> they won't let you guys escape each other though, <laughs> no, I really, right? until somebody else wins it again <laughs> do you guys have that feeling ever like gosh you guys can you just win the gold medal so we can kind of move on take a little bit of a break there you go you know if when the U.S. team plays, I want to see him win. You know, if somebody gets, that's great. That's wonderful. But, uh, you know, I, I cheer for uh, all the U.S. teams, men's, women's, you know, if the U.S. athletes involved against other countries, I think it's one of the greatest honors to represent your country. So every time they're out there, I hope they do win. Well, and you know, what's funny is, you know, everybody knows you from the 1980 team and, and everybody knows that team so well in general, uh, but that was actually your second stint at the Olympics. Uh, you were on the 76 team as well. Um, what made those two teams different and what kind of pushed you guys over the edge in that 1980 year to actually win it? You know, in 1976, we had a pretty good team. I had the port. I was fortunate to play for Bob Johnson, Mark's father. He, after all those NCAA tournaments, he won at Wisconsin and stuff. And he was a great coach, uh, he was U.S. national coach, I think, two years prior. So that's, I played well enough. So we selected me for the 76 team. We had a good team. Uh, all we had to do is tie the West Germans. We had never lost the West Germans when I played. All we had to do was tie them for the bronze medal. So we tied them. I think we took fourth or fifth. All we got was a piece of paper. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I'll tell you the difference of the team. We had more depth in 1980. Uh, uh, the teams, were, the Russians were still the same. Uh, I think they only beat us in 76, five to three or something. So they had a good team. But this, but our team had more depth and uh, we had four lines uh, back in 76. We didn't, uh, uh, I mean, we had defensively, we were very good back in 1980. And uh, 
those are probably the two biggest difference, but we were in such good shape. I mean, we wore every team down. I mean, back in 1980, I think our strongest period was the third period. And if you look at the stats, we got most of our points in the third period. We always came from behind. So we eventually wore everybody down. And uh, uh, that was probably the biggest thing. We had I would probably a little more talented too, obviously. <laughs> but uh, uh, but they, they were both good teams. But I'd say the 80, 80 team had more depth for sure. So coming back in the third period, you watched a lot of Minnesota Wild games this year then, right? You saw them do the <laughs> oh, same yeah. thing. Oh, Take yeah. that book from the, the 80 team. I don't know. I don't know, but they're, they're fun to watch. I'll tell you, I tried to watch this long to this is they're the fun team to watch. I think they're going to do well. Are you, do, nice you, do you follow them pretty closely? I mean, obviously I, again, you're here, I you're watch, in hockey. I, I watch them and I watch other teams too. I got that NHL channel. I go <laughs> one game to the next game and I drift all over. I love it. You got to do it. That's a hockey thing, right? <laughs> oh yeah. It's fun to watch. Yeah. I enjoy watching it. You know, we had kind of talked about Ba Harrington, obviously John Harrington, who was on your line. Um, but unfortunately Mark Pavlich, some, some sad news coming out. Um, how often did you keep in touch with Pav and, and how aware were you that he was kind of maybe dealing with some of these struggles or did you have any further insight that things had kind of gone awry for, for him, unfortunately? Yeah. Uh, when I first met Pav, we, uh, we back in 1980 and stuff, and I knew a lot of his, his, his family and his family's history. My wife was from Eveleth too. So when everybody in Eveleth knows everybody else's <laughs> business, you know, that goes, but uh, I knew uh, all of his friends, uh, uh, growing up, uh, uh, and I, we met and we fit like a glove together. And he was a great guy. What a great center. I mean, what a nice person he was too. Uh, and you know, he's got, he actually made, I think made the whole line go. I mean, he used to tell me all the time. He said, buzz, don't worry about anything. Get in front of the net and put it on a stick. And I go, okay, I can do that. I mean, just like we're <laughs> hockey. And he made it happen too. He made it sound so easy. And, uh, I trusted him. He trusted me. I mean, he was my road roommate on the, on the road and stuff. And, uh, uh Herbie knew uh, my wife's parents and his parents knew each other and stuff. So uh, yeah, he was, he was a good guy, an honest, uh, humble guy, uh, very generous. A lot of people don't know about and quiet. And I stayed in touch with him. Oh, from 1980, every, uh, every couple of weeks or every month, he'd call me and I'd say, Pab, where are you at? Yo, I'm in Arizona. What do you do? I'm looking at land. Then he called me out, <laughs> out in Idaho. I mean, he was, he was a little land baron and he, uh, in fact, I listed some of his property up on uh, Grand Marie up there in that area at one time and stuff. And I remember he was funny. Uh, he had he had like 200, 225 acres and he wanted to sell off a 40 acre, acre parcel and stuff. And I, I listed, I said, Pab, you should get somebody up there to list and make it. He said, oh, he says, I'll help you out. <laughs> and uh, so I, I listed the land. I said, Pab, it's not going. He says, well, let's just raise it another 25 grand. So I, <laughs> I raised it. <laughs> but no, we got along good. And he... Uh, you know, he's, he dealt with some few issues and stuff, and it didn't help getting banged around like he did uh, playing in the National Hockey League, that's for sure. But, uh, uh, you know, when all of us, you know, we're not perfect. We all make mistakes and we're all dealing with smaller, you know, dealing with issues and stuff. And he's no different than anybody else, but it's, but it took its toll. And, you know, he's a good friend and uh, he always will be. And uh, I trusted him and uh, a good person. And I, I enjoy playing with him. I'm lucky enough I can call him my friend and uh, uh, he's got a lot of good friends up there too. And uh, I, he's a special person to me and uh, you know, quiet guy, humble. And, you know, we used to do these team things and he never show up. And I said, Pab, you sure you don't want to show up? He said, what difference does it make? All the money's the same. We all get cut the same way. <laughs> you know, Smart businessman. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, what he did, what he did by it, you know, he didn't like to be around a lot of people and stuff. And I uh, didn't like to be the center of attention and, or anything and there's nothing wrong with that and uh, uh no we got along great i mean uh even when he was you know towards the end that we still stayed in touch and uh he always be lecturing me what to do and what not to do but i thought he had the real estate license not me <laughs> <laughs> did you sell that land then even when you raised the price no well, what he did is he he took it off the market after a while and i said i told him i said pab i said you know I have another girl up there and he said you know buzz uh uh uh, I'll take it off and you guys work out your commission. I said, Pav, you just keep my commission. He said, Jeez, he said we could do that all day long. And I said, yeah, Pav, you'll be making money and I won't. Yeah, right. <laughs> you talked about the connection, obviously, that he had where he's like, I'll just find your stick. I mean, how true was that with him and Ba? I mean, did it just click and you guys couldn't really explain it? It just was something that was there and the chemistry really I, helped. I, I think it was the chemistry. Uh, I'll tell you, I kind of knew you know, they were starting to change lines. When our line started when after the training camp and trials, I knew our line was kind of going to stay together, I think in November. And uh, I remember one game, we were up two to one. I think we might've been playing at the, the old Mets, Mets center and stuff. And 
I don't know, we were up like two to one or something. We, uh, our line came off and got a goal. And I, you know, most coaches would say, geez, nice shift, nice goal and stuff. I remember Herbie came over to Pav and I grabbed the back of our jerseys and he says, next shift, you guys get out, get out and put this doggone thing away. And he walked away. And then with our next shift, we went out, we got another one. So <laughs> we did what the coach wanted us to do and our line stayed the same. But, you know, Herbie was like that. He did that at, when I was at Minnesota, too. We won the NCAA championship for Minnesota for the first time in 74. I mean, us other arranged guys that I played with, Mike Polich and Calico Salter, our lines stayed together all year long, and everyone, they all changed except for ours. So uh, I don't know. So I left it. I thought that was a pretty good omen. So I just <laughs> let it go. But we, uh, we played well together. There was, there was mainly chemistry, I think and knew what to expect each other, what to do and stuff. So it, it worked. It worked for us. It was fun plan. That was a fun year. That was one of the funnest years in hockey I've ever had. That was great. Well, you know, you've touched on the, the chemistry of your teammates. and We talked about Herb Brooks a little bit, but go in a little bit more depth about what it was like playing for him. I think a lot of people, um, I know Jesse and I talk all the time, like that's one person we wish we could interview, somebody we wish was still alive today that we could talk to. Um, you got to spend a, a quite a bit of time around him. What was he like and what was it like playing for him? You know, uh, I was one of Herbie's first recruits at the University of Minnesota. There were six of us, and it was his first year. He recruited me. He recruited me late. I was going to either play baseball at Minnesota or hockey or both. Tried to play both. I, I came down. But uh, uh, he recruited, so I knew him pretty well. And uh, first year, I think we went from like 10th to 6th. And the second year, we won the national championship the NCAA. So he turned it around quick. He recruited a bunch of good guys. So, But he was a good coach. I mean, I've never played for a guy that never made a bench mistake. I mean, Herbie never made one. He was always well-prepared, never made a bench mistake. And, uh, and what he said, it was, it was his way and that was it. And uh, he was tough, but he wasn't mean or anything like that. And he said some things, uh, you know, if the shoe fits, you wear it. But uh, for a lot of people don't know, I was, a, I've been out with Herbie a couple of times and stuff and he was a tough coach, but I got to see the other side of Herbie a little bit too. And you know how when he coached that 80 team, you know, you kind of put the wall down and stuff and he kind of kept it there a little bit, but, but I got to know Herbie when he, the wall came up, but he was a good guy. I mean, he was an honest guy, a lot of fun. Uh, but I think that's what a lot of people don't know about him. But when he coached, he coached to win and he did a great job, but love playing for the guy. He's one of those guys that says something today and you don't see him the whole year long. And next year he means the same thing. So he's <laughs> definitely a fan of his work. I mean, God, you got to love and respect people like that. But I, I, I've never played for a better coach than her books. I know that. I love that. You know, I'm sure you keep up with some USA hockey. You had mentioned you're following hockey. You're always watching the Olympics. How exciting is it to see the crop of young talent be very similar to what it was when you guys were coming up? I mean, you're seeing these young amateur players finally start to really shine on the big stages at the world junior championships and, you know, at the world championships too. How exciting is that for USA hockey to see it uh, be very competitive again? I think it's great. I mean, I watch these kids. I go, God, were we even that good? I mean, uh, <laughs> but I watch these kids, and nowadays these kids can come from anywhere, which is nice. And before it was more geographically located. Now these kids are coming from California. They're coming. I think the, the opportunity for American hockey players it, it, it's great. And to watch these kids play, they're big, fast, strong. They can skate. They shoot. They're a lot of fun to watch. I mean, I watch junior hockey, the women's hockey. Uh, I just the international tournament over there. What I really enjoy watching. That's fun on the big ranks and. Uh, watching the U.S. team uh, play, that's, that's great. They do a nice job. And it's, I think it's a great opportunity for hockey. And it's, you know, even though I'm not involved, I still kind of am because I, I sure enjoy watching it. It's a lot of fun. And the people that follow and around hockey, what a great bunch of people. i am tell you, they're, they're all diehard fans and, uh, and good regular people. And Lou Vero, should we mention Lou Vero and your thoughts Lou, on him with USA Lou, Hockey? <laughs> Lou Vero's with, yep, I remember, yeah, with Lou uh, back in the day. He's great. I love, I love hanging around him. His, his, uh, his versions on things are great. I love, I love listening to him. And I think I like when he talks about cooking the best though. <laughs> That's true. Amazing cook. Very yeah. Italian. Very, very delicious. Yeah, he's a great guy. I keep wanting to get him on the pod, but I don't think we have like three hours to spend chatting <laughs> oh, yeah. with him, right? You see a lot. Yeah, he's a great, he's a great promoter of USA hockey. Those guys, all of them out there do a nice job. Yeah. You know, are you, and I think I had read your coordinator with the Turkey men's national team. Is that correct? Tell us a little yeah. bit about that role and how you got involved that, there. That was, that was, that was an experience. I mean, <laughs> if I, you know, if I did play on the 80 team, I probably would never got asked. Well, what happened is uh, Steve Janicek knew somebody in the state department uh, in Washington, DC, John Jasek. Uh, 
he's a liaison with the Supreme Court. And they were looking for somebody to go to Turkey. And what they wanted to do in Turkey, the U.S. Embassy asked, instead of having the basketball players or swimmers come over for a week and put in on a camp, uh, they wanted somebody for a month long. And uh, uh, I got a call from the U.S. Embassy in Ankara, Turkey, to come over for a month. And they said, and I said, would you be willing to come over? I, you know, I'm not sure what your schedule is and stuff. And I was supposed to put on hockey clinics Monday through Friday from eight to five and have the rest of my day off. Uh, so I, and, but then they called me back. He said, you mind doing this for two months? So I went over there for two months and I did it. And it was supposed to be for kids from like nine to 13, but it was, it was everybody, both men and women from nine to about 30. It was their national teams and everything else. So I just put on this clinic for a couple months. Uh, it was actually done with by the Fulbright scholarship program. And so I stayed in Ankara for two months. It was just beautiful over there and the food was great. But my first question was, number one, do they have ice? <laughs> I mean, they got 75 million people. I think they have five rinks now. But yeah. after my stint was done uh, for the two months I came back, I was doing my real estate. The Turkish Ice Hockey Federation asked me if I could be their general coordinator uh, for six months just to help them out. And so I ended up going back uh, for six months uh, as their general coordinator. And uh, uh, it was interesting. They're building a new rink and they weren't too sure how to uh, flood a rink and they kind of ruined the boards. They put about a foot of water on the ice, but... <laughs> <laughs> but but I was uh, their general coordinator. Then I was uh, I coached the under eighteen Turkish team in Division Three, and then like the men's national team, we went down in New Zealand uh, for a world tournament. But there, uh, uh, I think there's about forty to forty five teams in the world with the IIHF, mm -hmm. and I think Turkey's like at I don't know thirty eight or you know okay. forty. They're towards the bottom and stuff, and. Uh, uh, but, you know, the, the kids, they play hockey over there, too. Uh, uh, they do it the same thing. They, they got a ways to go, though. I mean, uh, uh, when I was over there at that time, the best players were the, uh, the women players because they were figure skaters that made the transition, mm -hmm. so they got to jump ahead. But uh, they still have a program that's going strong. But it was a lot of interesting experience, not so much on the ice, yeah. but more off the ice. I'm I mean, sure. the culture was different with the mosques, and uh, they brought me a bunch of different mosques. It was, it was quite quite interesting and uh but hockey their level i mean it's i would say like for the men's national team of boys a minnesota boys high school hockey team for probably maybe wow. people. yeah I so know, there's a little, a, there's little a different huh? yeah it is and they're you know like we're the state hockey where they're 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 just starting but they got five rinks now uh they're doing pretty good and uh at first i thought geez like you know they were talking about payments and stuff. Geez, maybe I get kind of like the men's basketball team. But no, they're not liking them, anything basketball over there in that European league. The hockey for them isn't, but no. Yeah. But it was nice. I still stay in touch with a couple of the guys over there. And uh, it, it, it's diff the culture's different, but it's it opened up my eyes, that's for sure. But it was fun. Yeah. Well, I think one of the coolest things that uh, anybody who's listened to this interview with you can can take away, and I think we learned this a lot, is that the hockey community is so unique and so special. And even as you know your hockey career moves on and you stop playing and maybe you go into coaching or you go into training or whatever it may be, you still feel very involved because the hockey community is so special. Have you had that feeling that you, know, you had that moment in 1980, you had this hockey career, and now as you do all this other stuff, you still feel connected, you're still in touch with all of these people because the hockey community is so close-knit I think so I mean all my friends I met them through hockey whether my teammates or you know people like you people but when I first started a business I the only three people I trusted were hockey players because I wouldn't <laughs> fool you you can't fool the guy you're sitting next to the locker room I got business I felt the same way but no, it's, <laughs> but no it's I I enjoy being around hockey people everybody understands it uh uh uh, even the fans do too. So, uh, you know, I, I, you're still connected for some reason, you're still connected. And especially in this state, I mean, what a place for hockey. I mean, there's nothing, there's no place like it, you know, in, in this country, like it is here and probably maybe quote like Canada, maybe, but uh, <laughs> so it's pretty special, but no, the, the business community I, in the hockey community, I think well net all, all the connections I made through are, are through hockey and I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Well, and again, that speaks to what Minnesota hockey has established here, right? You talked about in Turkey, there are five rinks where there are rinks at every single turn here in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how special was it to grow up, especially on the range where that's, you know, kind of part of an identity up there playing hockey. I mean, how special is Minnesota hockey here uh, compared to elsewhere? I think so. You know, growing up in Iron Range, I mean, that I believe from my understanding, you know, being on on the Hockey Hall of Fame Museum board is, I think Eveleth at one time had more people in the National Hockey League than all the U.S. combined. I mean, 
I grew up hearing nothing about John Mariucci, Sam Lepresti, <laughs> Jeff, Mike Caracas, uh, Mr. Zero. Uh, but, you know, I, those are my idols growing up. And uh, you hear stories about the, geez, I want to be like them a little bit. And uh, like even my boss, I worked for Lefty Kern, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he was one of my idols. He was my boss for seven years at one place. And uh, I grew up on the range idolizing uh, uh, those older guys. And uh, there wasn't a lot of rinks up there. We skated outside, but it usually came in like end of October, first part of November. So we had the advantage at that one time because geographically it was colder up there than it was down here. Uh, but the pendulum, I think, changed in the mid '70s when there's more kids, uh, more rinks and stuff. So it was great for the game. But you know, it's hockey's pretty special up there, and uh, 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 to us kids growing up at that time, and there was a lot of good hockey players that came from Iron Range, and I'm glad it was you know, as part of that uh, part of that group to be uh, one of them. So uh, uh, no, I enjoyed growing up. I lived down here in the cities. I like it down here too, but it's fun <laughs> to go back up in the summertime. I'll tell you, but not in the winter anymore. <laughs> no, you can't handle that cold anymore. No, I'm getting too old for that. I think Florida's on next. There you go. That sounds about right. I have to give shout out to Lefty Curran. My mom is from International Falls. So okay, that's all yeah. we ever heard. And all of the great International Falls players that came out back oh, in the yeah. day. Yeah. So. You should have him on. He was, he, was, he was one of my idols too. Like I said, I worked for, for a second. He was a great guy. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, you're a great guy. We greatly, greatly appreciate you coming on, Buzzy. Uh, we'll let you get going here. Have a wonderful okay. time. I know you're hitting the you're, Saints game tonight, right? That should be fun. I'm looking forward in my family instead of having Father's Day on Sunday, like I mentioned before. They're taking me out tonight. We're having Father's Day tonight at uh, uh, the Saints game downtown at CH Field. Fun. So I'm looking forward to that. So it'll be awesome. fun to get back town and people are out again, which is great. Right. Well, Buzz, you are the best. We really appreciate it. We'll get oh. you back on and uh, hang out some, sometime soon. Okay, we'll have a miracle on ice beer with you one of these days. Let's see the can. You have the can there. Let's see it. Not right that you're here. drinking at 9 a.m. in the morning, but you have one. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, go pick yourself up some of that beer. It is very good, too. If you love, I love Lift Bridge in general, so they always do yes. a great job. Yes. But it's okay. awesome. We're going to take another quick Alexa, break. Just we'll be thank right you. back. Hey, guys. This is producer Fred. I just want to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review, you name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app. Thanks again to Buzzy for, for joining us. God, I just, so much fun. My cheeks hurt. I remember, I think I texted you and Fred Alexis when I was at uh, the Hendrickson Foundation. I was like, yes, I'm coaching with Buzz. I mean, I wish it would have been you, but I got to coach with Buzz Schneider and we were just like palling around. Like we've yeah. been old friends and I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever had happen to me. Well, it was funny when, uh, when you did coach with him, because I think we talked about this in a previous episode, but you and I were there that morning. Uh, I, we went our separate ways. I went to work, you went home and then they texted us and they were like, Hey, you guys want to come back and coach? And we were like, well, Alexis is at work, but I'll come back yeah. the rest of the night. Jesse is texting us. She's like, I got this person for the podcast. I'm coaching with this person. <laughs> I talked to this person. We're like, damn, she's really just like networking over just there. Out there. Like, Hey, hi, I'm Jesse. <laughs> Living What's her best on? life. <laughs> I wasn't even supposed to be on that bench with them, but it was, it was Neil Broughton and and Bud Schneider I was like no I'm just gonna stay here and Fletcher's like no you're on this bench I'm like nah I'm just I'm gonna stay here this is where I belong <laughs> so that's what we did yeah and uh you unfortunately couldn't pull out the win but you had fun and that's what matters at the end of the day right we had a great time like it it was just it was a really really fun time as and always, we got him on the podcast sure. and, and hopefully you guys like that too right in so. his response I had texted him then after like during the week and I said hey Buzz would you be available to come join us and it took him a couple of days to get back. And I was like, oh, whatever. I'm not going to pressure it. It's yeah. summertime. I like to like not be all in your face all the time. Yeah. And then his response was, hey, coach, sorry for the delay. I'd love to do it. <laughs> I was like, yes, you are the best. So again, thank you so much to him for joining us. We'll have to get yeah. some of his teammates. I know that they have a golf tournament coming up Yeah. Um, that maybe we'll try to swing out there and check out as well. Just to pal around with more 1980 Olympians. There are worse people to surround yourself with, I suppose. Network, baby, network, make those friends, make those connections. That's how we do it around here. And Jesse's exactly. the queen of that. I, I always say Jesse is the queen of getting shit done. Whatever Jesse wants, she goes and gets it. And I'm right there in the corner rooting for it. I get super <laughs> lucky sometimes. I will not lie, you guys. I know I've had people reach out like, how did you get so-and-so? I'm like, I literally DM'd them and they say, yeah. yes. I don't know. I just, you know, smile and say, hi. Jesse always shoots her shot when it comes to uh, getting <laughs> podcast guests. That's how we've gotten exactly. where we are. <laughs> so you'll, we have got plenty more lined up again, off season content, a little bit different, a little less hockey force. Obviously when big events come up, we will be sure to get those out on our YouTube channel. Be sure you're subscribing, following, rating, liking, commenting. We love the love, love, love the engagement. 
Um, the Calder Award will be announced soon, so I'm sure we'll probably have something to talk about there. It's either yeah. going to be the most epic rant of all time or the biggest <laughs> celebration. It's going to go one of two ways. <laughs> Kirill Kaprizov, there's our Kirill Kaprizov mention for yep. the Russian subtitles. We love you, Russians. <laughs> yeah, love you guys. Um, no, and then draft expansion. I mean, this yeah. off season is going to go by really quickly. Yeah. So while we love doing content like this, that's a little bit more condensed, a little bit more focused on the people. It's also uh, going to be, you know, we're excited to get back into the hockey conversation as well. So that's going to do it for this week. Again, shout out to talk North for featuring us on their lovely network presented sponsors. Soda stick.com use code bar down beauties, B E B A R D O W no scratch cancel cut this <laughs> she's gonna spell all 15 letters i know it's like i've never <laughs> spelled that before five four three two one presenting sponsors sodastick.com use code bar down beauties for 15 percent off all your purchases no more free shipping get that 15 percent a lot of great merch out there um including some bar down beauties gear coming your way as well yeah. so be sure to check that out um also be sure to get a free 10 bucks when you sign up at better edge b-e-t-t-o-r edge.com use code buttes shout out to tony hoagland at uh, state farm champlain insurance agency as well as jim beam it is summertime it is time to get your drink on with some jim beam um, you know, Alexis, what's your, what's your go-to mixer? Coke, Jim Beam? Coke. Yeah. Coke. Coke. I, I, I'm not much of a, a straight up drinker or a neat drinker, but, uh, Coke is usually, if I'm doing a dark liquor, I, I go with Coke as my mixer I mean, diet, actually usually diet. I'm not, I'm not too Art. big on regular Coke. Smart. But, yeah. Send me your recipes guys. I would like this kid yeah. is supposed to come out this week. So I was um, literally just going to say, Jesse, what's the countdown for liquor uh, consumption on your end over there? I know like I've, <laughs> I've got, there's so many new drinks that have come out too. And I'm like, Oh, I need that. I need to try that. I need all to the try seltzers. That. Yeah. <laughs> Forgetting so that many. I have been dry and sober for nine, <laughs> 10 months. Right. So we'll see how that all goes. My girlfriend just had a baby and she was like, I got drunk off of like two Trulies and it's been crazy. And I'm like, Oh God, I want that though. Like I live for that. So yeah, maybe one glass of Jim Beam will do me in, but <laughs> thank you to them as well. And as always, thank you to all of you for listening and loving on us. And it's just been an amazing ride. We're about to wrap up season two, technically here coming up. You'll have a best of as we release those compilations, but you guys are amazing. So we love you. Be sure to share with your friends. Let us know what you think. Any ideas, questions, always be uh be around to shoot them to us. Otherwise, have a great week. Happy 4th of July. Um, happy Canadian Days, Dominion Days for those up north celebrating that on July 1 as well. Have a good one.